Brad here and I'm about to do a how-to video on how to install a Samsung um, M.2 SSD into a gigabit motherboard. Um, this is a pretty tricky install. You got to know the right settings and everything. So I'm going to walk you through the entire process um, for putting um, Windows on the USB drive all the way to get it installed on this SSD. So let's get going. Okay, to start, here is the SSD. Uh, this is the M2, and it's a Samsung um, SM951. Uh, there's also another Samsung one um, that's very similar, and I think the install process should be the same. Um, so here's my Gigabit motherboard, and um, I'll show you right where I'm going to put it. So right here, see the 10 gigabytes per second M.2? This is the slot that this needs to go into. So the install of the actual physical item is actually really simple. Um, it's the software that's the tricky part. So to put this in, you're just going to slide it like this. Just like you do most other things and snap it in. And it's going to snap in and it's going to be up a little bit because there's a screw that you got to put in on the tip here. Now there's different sizes. As you can see, if you had um, different size M.2 cards, it should fit three different sizes in this gigabit uh, motherboard. But this one seems to need the screw right where it's set up to be. So all you're going to do is you put it in like that, just push it down a little bit, and then you're going to screw it in right here. It doesn't have to be super tight, you just don't want it to move around. Just make sure it's in there good. that's it and it is installed now now we're ready to do the tricky part um, and I'm gonna walk you through that in a second okay so when you when you get okay when you get to this screen and if you use the Windows USB tool um, you'll see your drive there. That's not a problem. This is that Samsung SM951. It's there, but you get this message. Windows can't be installed on this drive. Show details. Um, the reason it says is the computer's hardware may not support boot into this disk. So the problem is not with the drive. It's not with the motherboard or computer or anything. What it is is actually with the way the USB was created. So the way we created the USB with the Windows tool is not good for this setup. So I uh, just wanted to show you this because this is the first problem you're going to encounter. Um, so you don't want to do it that way. I'm going to show you now um, how to create the proper um, tool for the USB. Okay, the solution to the problem with that um, Windows cannot be installed on this disk era is to actually create your USB boot up disk using a different tool. The tool that I chose to use um, is called Rufus. So um, Rufus, you can do a search for Rufus and it's usually one of the top results in Google. If for some reason you can't find it, the URL is right here um, and that's um, https colon slash slash rufus dot a k e o dot i e I'll include a link in the video uh, information below so once you you go to rufus their website looks like this now it, it could change but you're looking for the file to download um, and here it is this says download and then rufus 2.3 so you would click on that and download it I've already downloaded it um, I've got it right here. So what you do is you just run. Uh, maybe I didn't download the right version. All right, I'm going to download it again. Okay. So here it is. Somehow I had a different version. So double click on it. And this will come up. This is Rufus right here. So what you're looking to do is you need to, um, down here, create a bootable disk using ISO. So you click on it, choose your ISO. Um, you don't need to worry about the label. This one, there's three options. You don't want the first one. 
I usually choose this MBR partition scheme for UEFI, but this GPT partition scheme for UEFI should also work. Um, the GPT is actually the newer format. Um, I'm just choosing the MBR because it's it's been around a bit longer. Um, FAT32 is fine. The rest of this information here is all correct. So then you just hit start, and then it's going to warn ask you that all the data is going to get destroyed and you just hit OK. And now once this is done, it takes a couple minutes, usually about five minutes. When it's done, then I'll show you how we install it um, onto um, the Gigabit motherboard. Okay, Rufus has completed creating the USB with Windows 10 on it for us. So now it's just with the default config settings on the um, BIOS, um, I'm just booting up the computer. So the computer is going to automatically um, start loading Windows setup from the USB. And I'm just going to skip this for now. I'll enter my key later. I'm going to install Windows 10 Pro, but whichever version, if you're going to install the home, select that one. Accept the terms. Next. And then here you're going to choose custom. And then here's the drive, and notice there's no message here um, like we saw before with the one from Windows. So the Rufus has done us well, and um, we can now go ahead and, and install Windows on this. So by clicking Next, Windows is going to start installing. So now what happens is Windows will install, and then the computer will reboot. When the computer reboots, you're going to end up back into the Windows setup. So I'll show you in a minute how we prevent that from happening. Okay, when you reboot your computer, you wanna hit F12 and then you're gonna get into here and you wanna enter the setup. There's a couple things you wanna change. First, you wanna to go to the classic mode, which I do that by clicking right over here. So I'm click here and go to classic mode. BIOS features. And then I'm going to go down here and the storage boot option control, double click on that and change it to either UEFI only or UEFI first. I'm going to do the only, but it should work with either, either one of those options. Double click, make sure this option's there and it is. Um, boot mode selection. This one you don't need to change. You can make it UEFI only. Um, I'm going to here, but it should work for both options there. Um, then you're going to come over to peripherals and with peripherals um, you're going to change this SATA configuration. You're going to double click on that and then you're going to double click here and choose RAID. Now I'm not sure if it works with this or not but I've been doing it so I also make the SATA Express SRIS capabilities. I'll set that to disabled seems like I can come back in here later um, and, and, in it, and put it back to auto and it seems to work fine but this initial setup I'm going to leave it like that and then the Marvel SATA controller I'm also going to change this to um, raid mode um, I can come back when I'm done and change this out of raid mode and it usually doesn't affect anything but I'm going to change that here because um, I seem to have good results with that then I'm going to save and exit and save and exit and then I'm going to hit yes and then your computer will reboot um, and once it reboots it should start you want to make sure it doesn't boot up to the USB drive if it does um, you'll have to figure out what's going on um, but if it if you end up back in the setup then you're going to have to reboot and see but you should if it all works well um, it's booting up now to the SSD drive. The USB is still in because it needs to use some files from it. So you want to make sure the USB stays in. Um, now this is an indication here by it saying getting ready that I'm definitely booting to the SSD and not to the USB drive. So right now it's finishing the install of Windows 10. When it's done, I'll be ready to um, use Windows 10. Alright, there you have it. It now has booted up to Windows 10.
So I'm gonna go back now. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut it down. I've taken the USB out, and um, I'm gonna boot back up to the um, um, BIOS and just change a couple of the settings back to what we what they were before. So I'm gonna hit F12 now while it's rebooting. Um, I shut down, so I turn it back on. I'm gonna hit F12. And basically this is just so I can enter the setup. Enter setup. Go in here. Um, so I'm gonna go to peripherals here. I'm gonna change this Marvel SATA controller. I'm gonna take this out of raid mode and I'm gonna put it back to what it was in. And then the other thing I'm going to change is the SATA configuration. I'm going to leave that in RAID mode, but I had this disabled here. Um, I'm just going to make this auto. Okay. And that's all I'm going to do. Um, the BIOS features can stay the same. Um, let's save and exit. And save and exit. Yes. And then now the only thing in there, the USB drive is disconnected, is only the Windows 10 installation on that SSD. So we'll see it in a minute loading up Windows 10. And there it goes. So we don't have any problems. So some of those settings, are, it, it seems to behave differently, but the settings I gave you should work. And then you can put them back to normal after this. So it's still kept in RAID mode because if it's taken out of RAID mode, um, it won't recognize that drive. So I want to thank you for um, watching my video on how to. And I hope this helps you um, not get as frustrated as I was trying to discover the um, solution. I tried this many different ways with Windows 8. I could not get it to install in Windows 8. I'm not sure why. Um, the same procedure should work for that, but I couldn't get it to work. So, but here I got Windows 10 with it working and um, just wanted to share it. So, thanks for watching.